Hello, everyone. Um, I hope everyone is able to, to hear me and um, to see me, and I hope that everyone is um, doing well this evening. For the first couple of minutes, we're just going to be admitting people as they get into the um, as they get into the the room. We're just going to be admitting a few people, um, and once we got the majority of the evening, we're going to go ahead and get started. So everybody, if you don't mind to just drop a, a yes or a thumbs up or something in the chat, if you can hear me and see me and everything looks looks good for you. Um, thank you, thank you. Hello to everyone. Wonderful. I hope everyone is having a wonderful evening. I hope that it's not too hot where you are. It's pretty hot here. Uh, what about you, Courtney? Is your uh, your weather pretty rough? It certainly was. We had a we had a very severe storm come through, and mm -hmm. it caused some severe flooding issues. Yeah, I hope everyone is staying safe in this certainly very hot and um, stormy weather we've been having lately. So, um, you know, hopefully it'll pass, and we'll get into fall soon. One of my favorite times. Okay, so we're adding a few more people here. Hello to everyone joining us. Let's see here. We do have um, two other JCP authors that are joining us this evening as well. Ralphine Major is joining us and um, Jeff Geiger Jr. is joining us and he um, actually wrote the blurb on the back of Pinky Swear. So we are happy to have him and excited to celebrate Courtney's new book. Thank you for writing the blurb. I have seen it and it, it's, it's rather lovely. So thank you very much. Yes, we are excited to have him join us. And let's see, we've got a few people here. Hopefully that'll be joining us soon. If anyone has any problems throughout the evening with your audio or your video, or if you can't hear me or see me or see Courtney, um, please let me know in the chat. Um, and I will do what I can to, to make it work for everybody and making sure that everybody can see everything. Um, we are recording this. So anyone who misses anything, this will be available after the fact for people to watch as many times as you please and catch up if you uh, need a refresher or want to listen to the teaser again or anything in the, the anticipation for uh, Pinky Swear's release coming soon in September. So let's see here. Very soon here in about two minutes, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, people should be joining us throughout the evening as well, um, and we will make sure that they are able to attend and able to see everything. Um, so we're just waiting on a few more here. And we are going to start the evening um, with just a recap of My Brother's Keeper, which is the first novel in Courtney's series. And um, we're going to do some, some reminders of that excitement. And then we'll be able to go on and do our, our special cover reveal, which we are very excited about. So um, let's see here. Very shortly, I will share my screen after we've done a little bit of a recap about um, My Brother's Keeper. I will go ahead and um, share my screen so everybody can see the book trailer for that. Um, we are super pleased with it and um, I hope Courtney is as well. It's beautiful. So that'll give you another little insight into the start of the series. My Brother's Keeper, of course, is currently available if anyone wants to um, if you don't have it and you want to go ahead and catch up before the release of Pinky Swear in September, that's now's a good time, good time to do that. Okay. So I'm not sure, let's see, one of our attendees currently may not be able to hear me, but um, hopefully they will be able to soon. 
like I said, if anyone has any problems, please put it in the chat. Also, if you have questions throughout the evening um, for Courtney and about the, the series or about any of Courtney's short stories or her upcoming work, um, please, by all means, put it in the chat and we will have a little question and answer session um, towards the end of the evening. So any questions, we are happy to, happy to answer. Okay, let's go ahead and get started as we wait for a couple other people to join us. And um, Courtney, if you don't mind, why don't you give us a little insight about My Brother's Keeper and, um, you know, do some do some synopsis and um, let us know some some of your favorite aspects about that one. Well, the thing about My Brother's Keeper that was most important to me was that it started with just one sentence. There was a thud and a bump and it happened in my in the upstairs of the house that I was currently living in. And I wrote it down and it's like the story just flowed from my fingertips. I developed a character, Jared, Jared Miller and his family. Jared's 17 years old and he did something a year prior that he wasn't very proud of and he didn't really want to share it took the guidance of his sister, Ella, to really get him to come to terms with what happened. Um, and then she also may have been influenced by a spirit that was controlling her. You don't really find out about the paranormal aspect until later, but most of the people who are joining us have, have read one or both of the stories because of, of the gentleman who wrote the blurb. So I, I don't feel badly about mentioning that. But it is a paranormal mystery. Um, the Miller family was easy to create. I, I didn't think that I could have such a dynamic between the characters. But watching watching my children and their interactions, because I'm an only child, but watching their interactions really helped me be able to to create a dialogue that that shaped the dynamic between the siblings so very well. And, and of course, the sarcasm throughout the book, it, I, it just fell into place with very little effort. <laughs> but there are some secrets in the town, not just in the Miller family. And you learn a little bit about that, but it is a series. So that's going to strengthen in each book and build as you go along the way. But Jared was modeled strongly after my son Sterling. And he has a he has the type of personality that you, you can't easily put all into one character. So he's it, it's been divided. Jared is not solely Sterling, but a lot of his responses are very, very similar. And I know a lot of writers have talked to me and have told me that they've modeled characters after people that they know. But mostly what I like to do is I like to blend people that I know together to create a character. That way I'm not taking someone and what they would do and, and completely modeling it after them. I, I'm taking it and I'm thinking, OK, well, the physical attributes are this, but this person would respond here, whereas the way this character in the story is, I think that it's going in, in this direction. And I don't write an outline. I've never written an outline for a story. And I really enjoy being able to let the characters talk to me through my fingers and just come right out onto the page. There have been times that I've been surprised. Ella has done some things that have shocked me. <laughs> so it's it's been really great um i mentioned jared i mentioned ella ella is his younger sister but sydney is also his younger sister and sydney is she she comes into play a little later but she is also you know part of the family then there's miranda miller his mother and you see a lot of her and I have my own opinions about her and that I've also heard reader opinion about her. So I'll just let I'll just let you formulate your own opinions about Miss Miranda. And um, 
And then you do have Connor Murphy, her father, the police sergeant. That would be Jared's grandfather, who has kind of been in and out of their lives, uh, not so much in it the past several years when you come to meet him in My Brother's Keeper. So, but he does play a larger part later. Um, and and within the book, he he has a he has a great part. And and that one, um, I kind of modeled him after my own father in a lot of ways. But but he, he looks nothing like my dad. And and some of the things he says are, are nothing like what my father would say. <laughs> but that's that's my brother's keeper. I'm, everyone envisions or every writer that I know envisions their book becoming a movie or a Netflix series or something like that. And so when I was writing it, this song came on the radio and it was called Ordinary World. It's by Duran Duran. And I thought if this were a series or a movie, this would be the perfect lead in for it. And so whenever I'm writing and and I stumble across something that's that's not working out well for me, I'll listen to that song. And sometimes I get inspired to to write the next scene or, or maybe not even the next scene, but a scene later on in, in the book. Do you find that the characters that you have that are based off or inspired by some of your own children or other family members and friends, do you, how do your family members and friends react to that? Are your children, do they love the story? Are they excited? Do they help you in, um, help you in choosing what, what decisions those characters make? Sydney was a name that I was going to name my eldest daughter. So she at first she was really pleased that she thought that she was in the story. And then she realized that Sydney is in no way like her. <laughs> and so it and it wasn't. I, I just took a name for her. And and so that would but in another work that I have, there is a lady in it that I did, I did put it, it's a strong resemblance to a family member. She has no idea. <laughs> she had no idea. In fact, she didn't even like the character. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yes. Well, my father passed away. I, I think he would have liked Connor Murphy, but he passed away. Um, he passed away about eight years ago. But I, I think he he would have liked that. I'm sure that he would have. Um, thank you for sharing that about my brother's keeper. I do want to, like I said, I want to go ahead and share my screen for everybody so we can um, get some insight from the um, from the book trailer. So let's go ahead and do that. And everybody, if you can see, great. Please let me know if you cannot see. Um, and we're going to do our book trailer, okay? Here we go. Okay, can everybody hear me still? Oh, we are still playing music. Hold on one moment. I couldn't hear the, the music during the book trailer. I don't know if I was the only one. 
Okay, let's but, see. Who was able to hear the music? If not, we can let's go back and try it again. <laughs> Were we able to see the book trailer? Oh, okay. See, but not here. Do we want Courtney? Would you like me to go through and try and do it again? Let's see if we can get it to do the. You can you can try it one more time. I don't I don't want to bore everyone. <laughs> no, no, that's a very interesting book trailer. We're not going to bore anyone. Let's let's go one more time. I bet you, it was because I minimized my camera. Let's see. Okay, can everyone see the? Um, can everyone see the screen with the trailer? And can we? hear it if I click play. Okay, did it work that time around? Was everyone able to see and hear? Yes, or at least I was. Wonderful, I'm glad that everyone was able to see and hear. Um, and we got to watch it twice. So in case you missed anything the first time, you get to see it again. Um, that trailer is available on our YouTube. So anytime that you want to go check it out, you can go to jancarolpublishing.com and go straight to our YouTube from there. Um, again, that's a one that we had a lot of fun putting together. So we're glad that it came out so well and that everyone got to see it. Um, excuse me. Courtney, why don't we go ahead and discuss what we are all here for and most excited about Pinky Swear. Um, can you give us some, some background about Pinky Swear and tell us about the synopsis and maybe what you're most excited for with this sequel? Well, in the book, and, and I've hinted about Sydney before, but I wanted to see things from her perspective. She, she has her own skill set. And all of that comes to light in this book. And I wanted to understand her better. I wanted to understand why she thought the way she did, why she appeared to be so superficial when, in fact, she was very compassionate and very caring. And I wanted to to bring that out. And the only way that you can do that is through a first person narrative. And so I just picked up the, the computer again and I started writing it from her perspective. Um, in fact, I really started out in third person. And then when I started the first chapter, it was it was Sydney's voice that started it. And, you know, you, you've got your same cast of characters. Um, you you see, you know, Chief Connor Murphy a little more in this book, uh, because now that he's been reintroduced to the family, he's not so easily pushed out by Miranda. He wants to be there for the children, but Sydney is the only one that really welcomes him. And because she she embraces him the way that she does, he, he does the same with her. And most of his walls come down. Uh, he's, he, is a, he is a very strong stoic figure. But with her, you see, you see the love that he has for her and that he would do anything for her. 
Uh, you also, there's a mention of Lydia Sneed in the first book. Um, but in this book, she's kind of the arch nemesis. Um, they're, they're best friends, but it's, it's not really that way. You, you see that Sydney has a, a very toxic relationship with her where it's a very one-sided friendship. And finally, she has to break that off. And when she does, Lydia has time for some self-reflection. And when she comes back to Sydney, she comes back with a secret that is going to just shatter the perspective of the town itself. Because Lydia Sneed comes from a very well-to-do family. And they sit on this beautiful stretch of property near the Nolichucky River. I know not everyone is going to know where the Nolichucky River is, though. And but that is in that is in Irwin. I'm from Irwin, Tennessee. And and it is a river that flows through my area. And her house is right alongside that river. And you cross the road and there's this dilapidated structure that used to be a family home. And Lydia thinks of it as a place where princes and princesses go. She's created this idea in her mind from when she was three or four years old. And she takes Sydney there and tells her that. And that's the one moment that you can really see that there's more depth to Lydia Sneed than you first think. But then she goes right back to being spoiled. So, <laughs> but when she comes back with the mystery, um, she's changed, but there's a reason that she's changed. And so um, you'll have to read the book to find out. <laughs> um, you have added a lot of music um, and just discussion of music into Pinky Swear. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what your, what's your favorite song that you added into to Pinky Swear? Um, Go ahead. Well, my, my daughter, uh, my, my teenager, I told her about the, the, what was going on between Lydia and um, Lydia and Sydney. And she mentioned this uh, Melanie Martinez song called Lunchbox Friends. And when I listen to it, there, there's a little bit of language in it. I'm, I'm not keen on language, but it's a, it's a great song for their relationship. It, it defines it. So that was one of the ones that I added that I really felt like was was part of it. Now, there's a scene in the book where they're they're sitting in Lydia's bedroom and Lydia has this new technological, technologically advanced piece of equipment. And it's a it's a mood reader for a radio. And so whenever you come in the room and it's on, it can read your mood and it will it'll play a song based on your mood. And whenever they come in, it plays the song by war. Why can't we be friends? <laughs> and I thought that that was something that was was true to true to the scene. But there's there are so many, so many songs in there. Of course, the the first song, as I've discussed before, is Ordinary World by Duran Duran, because I, I feel like every every lead in every time that I do another another part of the series, that's going to be a song that that leads me in will be that song. So that's definitely there. I think those are some great choices, and um, I am excited to to see more about them as we delve into delve into pinky swear some um so i think that it is time for our cover reveal the the moment we've all been waiting for let's see um what pinky swear has to tell us on the front cover so um give me just one moment and i'm going to share my screen again so we can all take a look at what nice little drum roll <laughs> yes, absolutely All right, and here we go. The beautiful pinky swear cover. Need to scroll a little bit, hold on, let me, there we go. Full screen size, pinky swear. Um, the stunning cover that was um, created by um, our graphic designer, Tara. And um, Courtney, you had so many good ideas for us to work with, um, with pinky swear and um, we, 
we're thrilled with it. I hope that you are also thrilled with it. What do you think? I love it. Um, Tara was so great because she had several covers that she showed me to begin with. And I had sent her that I, I wanted, you know, the, the dilapidated structure of Lydia's to be to be on the cover. And she came up with some just beautiful designs. And this was one of them. But the the river was was blue. <laughs> so that was one of the changes that since since everyone's joining us, um, that that's some the fun little fact that you can know about the cover is that the river was originally blue and I asked her to change it to resemble more of the Nola Chucky River, kind of the muddy, the muddy look. And she did. And then she made it, um, she kind of faded it to where it would appear more ethereal, a little more like my the first book cover. Mm -hmm. So it fits and with the greens and the browns, it fits so perfectly into the series. I, I couldn't have asked for more. Tara is just wonderful. She is great. I agree. I'm glad that you love it. And I completely agree. I, I personally have been to the Nola Chucky and I, I think it is um, it resembles it beautifully. I think that um, the two of you did a perfect job on the cover. It's wonderful and it flows very well. Like you said, it flows very well in the series as the sequel to My Brother's Keeper. It's absolutely beautiful. I love love all the green and um, it's just stunning. So I am glad that you are just as excited about that as we are. Um, and again, thank you for sharing the synopsis and some little uh, hints about Pinky Swear. We're going to learn more about Pinky Swear later when we get a little teaser towards the end of our evening. Um, but right now I want to do a pause um, and Courtney is going to tell us about an upcoming giveaway on her social media. So go ahead, Courtney. <laughs> I wanted to do a giveaway uh, for people who didn't get a chance to tune in tonight because not everybody's schedule is the same. So I thought that I would offer it and provide a link on my social media so that people could join us and learn um, about the books and have a chance also to be in for a giveaway. So my word is saber. That'll be the word that is. Uh, for the giveaway to go into the drawing is Saber. Courtney, why don't you um, put your Instagram handle and do you have, you have a Facebook as well, right? Um, and put that I do. in the, put that over in the chat, just in case um, anyone needs a reminder of where to go and everyone make sure you have a pen and paper to write that down and show that you were paying attention tonight. Um, and like I said, this will be recorded in case anybody needs a reminder, but um, that's very exciting. And I hope everybody gets um, a chance to enter the giveaway and good luck to everyone. That's um, exciting to, to win a book. Everybody loves that. So I am glad that we got to help that along this evening. Um, for now, we're going to kind of take a step aside from um, Courtney's beautiful series and talk about a few of other a few other of Courtney's works, um, some of her short stories, and we have some um, some pictures to share with you as we discuss some of her other works. So, I'm going to go ahead and share our first image. Um, let's see, make sure can everybody see my screen appropriately? I hope so. Um, and we're gonna I, I can see it. Good. We're gonna start with this beautiful um, fawn. Courtney, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, the the background about this picture and um, tell us a little bit about the story that goes along with it. Okay. Um, I was I was involved in the anthology of Scattered Flowers. It was an Appalachia inspired short story collection. And I had to write about a woman who had a very strong sense of place. Within, I guess, maybe two weeks after hearing the tag for that, I walked out onto my porch with my children we all went and we played. Um, my husband comes home and he looks on the porch and he says, uh, there's a deer on the porch. <laughs> and I said, 
no, that's that's a dog or one of the children's toys. And, and as I approached it, I realized, in fact, that it was a fawn. So I called the uh, wildlife preserve and spoke to a lady who was very kind and helpful. She told me that mother deer will go on very hot days. And it was a hot day. It was in July. And they will give birth um, in cool places. They'll leave their babies behind or their fawns behind. And they will go and look for food and then they will come back in the evening and they will they will get the fawns. Well, I wasn't convinced. <laughs> um, I was also pregnant at the time. So my emotions were a little high. And and I said, well, if she doesn't come back and retrieve the baby, then can I call you? And and she said, sure, I'll come out and I'll pick it up. She said there was someone in your area not long ago that a deer gave birth in the back of his truck, in the back of his pickup truck. And he went out the next morning and he found it and he said, uh, I can't leave. So he had his wife take him to work. And sure enough, when he came back, the, deer, the fawn was gone. Uh, the mother deer had returned to get it. So I sat by the window all evening and watched the fawn and waited for the mother. And she did come back around twilight and retrieve the baby. And I was so thankful for that. It inspired me to write the book, to write this short story. And Bobby, she's the she's the main character and she's pregnant and something very similar happens to her. but then she ends up having to give birth because she's trying not to leave and have a human scent go by the by the fawn to prevent the mother from coming to get it so it delays her so much that she ends up having to give birth in her home because she waited too long and there, there's obviously more to the story than that, but that's that was the reason and that was everything behind why I wrote Fawn. Thank you for sharing that with us and um, remind me again where and obviously the um, the wonderful attendees that we have this evening where everyone can purchase that book and um, which of our anthologies that is included and I believe it was Scattered Flowers, is that correct? It was Scattered Flowers. I had um, I had that short story and I also had Marathon of Hope um, about a, a lady who has cancer and and her and her journey through cancer. And that was in indeed in Scattered Flowers, which was recently released. Um, you can get that through through me, of course. I would I would love it if you, you got a copy through me and I'd even sign it for you. But it is also available on Amazon and um, Savannah, it's on Barnes and Noble. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And it's on our JCP website. Um, anywhere that, that you need to grab it, you can. And by all means, if, if you're so inclined, grab a copy from Courtney so she can sign her, um, sign her cover for you. And then you'll, you'll be able to read her stories. They are absolutely wonderful. Um, let's go ahead and discuss a little bit more. Courtney, why don't you tell us about The Devil's Looking Glass? The Devil's Looking Glass is a rock formation that sits over the Nolichucky River. You can see it from the town of Irwin. And when I was young, my grandfather had a house that was located on Main Street. And if you walked out onto the front porch, you saw the Devil's Looking Glass. Well, I used to sit out there all of the time and watch the train pass by because you could literally throw a rock and hit the train tracks from his house. But I asked him once, and I have no idea why, because I never even thought of a rock formation having a name as to what it was. And he told me, well, that's the devil's looking glass. And, and I look at it and please tell me in the chat if you can see a, a devil looking at himself in a mirror, because that is what my grandfather told me it was and that it was based upon. Now, of course, you know, Hernando de Soto came through the Nola Chucky back when, you know, like. 1500s and such so maybe it looked more like a devil in, in a looking glass back then and and it's just eroded with time but I think it's a fairly new name that it was given 
much newer than than several hundred years ago. And and I just don't see it. But that is the devil's looking glass. So whenever I decided to write a short story for these Haunted Hills, too, which came out last year in September, um, I wrote kind of a campfire story. You've got a bunch of teenagers sitting around a campfire. Um, they're trading ghost stories. And um, and it has a really neat ending that I, I I didn't even expect whenever I wrote it and it just all fell into place so beautifully and I was so happy for it. And within that series, um, there's there are other great stories. Um, I read The Chair. I think it's Jan Howery. It was the first story in the book. And that was a that was a great story. And then Bev Freeman does the house in it, too. So. If you get a chance to purchase these Haunted Hills, too, now that the spooky season of the year is coming up, check out my story. Check out those stories. Read the other stories. Um, they're, all of the authors are, are really great in that anthology. Thank you, Courtney, for touching on that. And speaking of these Haunted Hills, we do have another copy of these Haunted Hills, these Haunted Hills 3, that is coming out very, very soon. Um, so Courtney, why don't you tell us about some of your stories in these Haunted Hills 3 um, and give us a little insight into that and then everybody can, can get the whole collection. Okay, well in these Haunted you can see on Savannah's screen that she has moved it to the library in town. Um, if you look at it, it's a side view of the old train depot. And the town has turned the old train depot into the Unicoi County Public Library. It is a wonderful place to visit. And in that library, in the old ticket window, they even have copies of my book for sale. Um, just beyond that library is a maybe a four story brick building and it's the old CSX train building. We we had a depot, of course, for the Clinchfield Railroad because that was what it was originally called, but it became CSX Railroad. Um, I teamed up with Edward Williams and a couple of other people. And I wrote a story called Railroad Crossing, an Irwin train story for these Haunted Hills 3. And I don't know, will that be out in September, Savannah? Um, we are hoping that it will be out, yes, towards the end of September um, at the latest early October. Um, so yes, in the spooky season of this year is when, when it will be released. Excellent. Well, I, I had a lot of ideas for this year. So I went to I went to a, a local um, Facebook site called the Irwin Buzz and I asked for a poll and I asked all of the people on the site and they have somewhere around 2000, 3000 members. I said, would you like one, two, three, four different stories? And I gave them, you know, brief synopsis of each one that I plan to do. And it was not unanimous, but there were a lot of people who wanted me to do a train story. So I called the town's museum curator of the of the railroad museum, Martha Irwin, and we got together and figured out who I needed to speak with so that it could be accurate. Still spooky, still got that that Halloween element to it. It talks, and I got to write from an 80 year old man's perspective. I love that. <laughs> yes, that one is very good. I have read that one. I won't give any spoilers away, but um, it was definitely one that I went back and read a second time because it was amazing. Um, so I'm glad that you were able to, to share that with us and everyone will be able to read it in these Haunted Hills 3. Um, we do have a, another picture here of the train tracks. Um, is there anything that you wanted to add, Courtney? Um, they were getting ready to redo the cross ties here. We don't have a lot of trains that come through Irwin anymore, sadly, but um, we do have a few. So when you hear that distant train horn, it it brings back you know a lot of memories. There's a lot of nostalgia for me. I've always been able to hear, or, or I've lived within sight of the railroad. It, it's a large part of everyone's life growing up in Irwin. And 
we, you know, we have the, we have the famous elephant hanging that happened um, just, just beyond right there in the railroad roundhouse area. Um, so we, we have a lot of history here. A lot of beautiful trains came through here. And that is something that you touch on in your short story as well, the um, elephant hanging. Um, and I've got to say the, the historical um, aspects of that short story are really on point. They're absolutely wonderful. Um, and I, like I said, I'm very excited that you were able to, to share that one with us and tell us a little bit about it tonight. I love a good teaser. Um, and we do have one other picture um, that we wanted to share with everyone. So Courtney, why don't you tell us about this one? That one is my favorite picture of Irwin. I took that a couple of weeks ago. I did an online author takeover and I wanted people to see Irwin. And I just pulled over in an area and I took it very quickly before I had to pull right back out onto the road. And I happened to catch a lovely view of Main Street downtown Irwin and with the sky in the background and that is my vision of my hometown the the lovely streets the open businesses the happy trees everything that's there it it's it speaks about my hometown and my feeling about it and i love writing about this with the setting of Irwin in my books and something i know a lot about i have traveled i can include some things here and there about about my travels uh, or in the books about other areas based on my travels. But I do like to include Irwin. I like it to center around Unicoi County. I think that's absolutely wonderful. Um, being able to, to not only um, thoroughly enjoy your hometown, but also bring it to all of your readers is a wonderful skill and um, certainly one that we are thrilled that you are able to share with us. Um, thank you so much for telling us about that. And definitely that picture is worth framing. It's beautiful. You did a fantastic job with that one. Um, so thank you for sharing that information with everybody. Again, absolutely wonderful. And if you want to learn more about all of the, the spooky and not so spooky um, stories that Courtney has about Irwin, um, by all means, Get in on our, on our anthologies, Amazon, jancarolpublishing.com, directly through Courtney so she can sign them for you. Um, a great place to pick them all up. And like I said, these Haunted Hills 3 will be out very, very soon um, this spooky season. And we are super excited um, to share that with everybody. This will be, you know, um, a wonderful annual tradition that we have um, kept going here. And so hopefully we'll be able to keep it going again next year and the year after as well. Um, thank you again, Courtney, for sharing that um, with us. And now let's return a little bit to um, Pinky Swear. And I would love to hear some of Pinky Swear. If you've got a, a short teaser that you can share with us, the beginning, the end, whatever you feel comfortable, but um, we want to know. We want, we want in on it, so share it. Okay, so I'm using my computer and I don't have physical copies as we know. So this is gonna have to be read off my phone. So please bear with me while I increase font size and, and, and look at it as I go. But this is, this is the first part of Pinky Swear. Um, so you're not going to learn anything that would ruin my brother's keeper for you. So no spoilers. Um, just kind of the, like I was saying about the third person lead in. And whenever this first chapter starts, you, you get things from Sydney's perspective. So this is Pinky Swear in the very beginning. The sky never foretold the upcoming misery. The land welcomed the light of the sun and its heat spread over a small valley in northeast Tennessee. Most of Irwin's residents knew that the autumn day would reheat the icy stroke of the night air, but not everything could be warmed by a solar touch. The sun's rays had already soaked Palewoods Academy when the students filed into its halls. The school had been built by an educational enthusiast, Racer, Racer Daniels, but he had abandoned the project when he had lost interest. 
Daniels had given the academy to an anonymous local woman who had seemed intelligent and kind during one of Daniels's visits, and she'd made certain the, lo the school continued to flourish. The building stood on a mountainside in the area the Native American Cherokee had named Palewoods. Palewoods Academy had been constructed using an old Civil War outpost that had been built from the trees that were cut down when the area was cleared for the building, along with the rock from the Nolichucky River, which ran parallel to Palewoods. The school was designed to hold the brightest minds in eastern Tennessee as they cruised from kindergarten through 12th grade. The students were required to pay tuition to the academy, but after the school almost fell into financial ruin, students of average intelligence were admitted so that some of the most intelligent members of the community could be given scholarships to the school. Most of the students had no problem digesting the rigorous academic curriculum, but some children, even those who performed very well in public schools, fell behind quickly. These students usually lasted a year or two, and their departure allowed a few new students to enter the halls of Palewoods every year. The crisp air coming through the entrance crept through the front rooms of the school, challenging the structure's outdated heating and air units. On the east side of the lower level, the eighth grade section was busy with Monday morning activities. It was the week of the Apple Festival in Irwin, but the two-day event wouldn't take place until Friday and Saturday. Many of the students were looking forward to a long weekend, and they didn't really want to go to school at all that week. The teachers assigned projects to keep their classes busy while they prepared for the festival, and many of them had booths or worked with local organizations during the festivities. In a town as small as Irwin, many families had a booth at the festival, a place at the pageants, or a spot on the entertainment stage. Everyone was under a spell as the out-of-town revenue entered the region. It was the only event in the small town that pulled people from other parts of the country, and the Irwin residents were prepared to absorb the profits from the visitors. The lot bathed the school and the playground, but it stopped at the woods that lined the property around the school. The war warming wind rustled through the dying leaves of Palewoods Forest. Some of the town's biggest secrets and deepest sorrows whispered through the creaking branches and silent caves. One of the secrets had found a way to stretch beyond Palewoods Forest and affect the lives of the townspeople. He was delighted to ruin families and spread disease in relationships, and he was ready for the next phase of his plan. One icy finger stretched into the air, caressing the darkness just beyond the light that it was denied. Soon, he promised, I will have my revenge. From deep inside her inner mind, Ella Miller heard him and shuddered. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, I already am desperate to, to read even more. Um, and I don't know how any of us are gonna survive until it comes out, but it will be out very soon in September. Um, so everyone can get in on that as soon as it comes out talk to Courtney about grabbing a copy, talk to us about grabbing a copy, get it on Amazon. Um, there will be plenty of announcement when it is released um, and we'll be posting the posting the links and, and reminding everyone about the release date immediately. Um, you can find that out on our social media or Courtney's social media. Um, and again, Courtney, thank you so much for sharing us with that or sharing that with us. Um, we absolutely enjoyed it and your writing as always is stunning thank you so much um so obviously there's a lot of excitement going on with pinky swear coming out and with these haunted hills three coming out um and lots of stuff that that you're finally releasing but i mean we all know that as an author is there ever really a time where you're not writing so tell us about what you're working on now what's coming up I write every day. <laughs> I usually read and write every day, but I write every day. It, it, it depends on, on what it is. But right now I am working, I'm about halfway through a paranormal suspense. And it's about a lady. I, I got the idea because I was out for a walk with my children and we were walking around the twilight hours and I kept looking around thinking I'm missing a child. Where is this child, I, I'm missing, I'm missing one of my children. And they were all there. All of them were there. And so I took that and I formulated an idea of, okay, well, what if, what if there was a woman who 
thought that she was missing a child and what if she was? So then, then I kind of, I, I just springboarded off of that. I'm halfway through. I expect to be done before the end of next month with that. I have, um, I have a finished manuscript um, of Finding Emma. That is a, that is a romance, a uh, kind of a family saga with a soft sci-fi twist. It's in my It's About Time series. And because I, I the way I ended it, I, I know that it, there's going to be another one. And then um, I have uh, Raz Putin's Dynasty. It, it is a young adult, but it is, um, it is, uh, I guess you would, the genre you would look at it to be under would be a fantasy genre. Um, but you, you can't really tell until you get about halfway through the book that that's, that's the way that it's going. And it is based on a, on a young man who stumbles across a drug that can cause the user to experience brief periods of intense uh, super awareness, speed, agility, but, and, and even used in medical settings can um, repair bones within hours, uh, can reverse terminal illnesses. And so what does he do with that? Does he, does he take it himself? And, and cause there are risks with that. The risks are he could become super aggressive and, and there's no, once you attain a certain level of aggression with this drug, there's no coming back. So that's another thing that I have to those all sound super interesting. Um, I hope that I get to read them all and I know I'm impatient, but um, I, I think that's amazing. And you said you write every day. Tell us like, how much do you write every day? I know some people, you know, they can only, um, uh, they can only have time to write so much and some people spend all day writing. And, you know, um, I think that it is very interesting always to, to look at each author's process and see what works best for them. So what works best for you? Well, I write, um, I have a lot of children. <laughs> so I write, uh, I write when they're sleeping. So it, it just depends on, on what I, I can get out, what I can do. Um, if it's 500 words, if it's a thousand words, uh, whatever it is, that's, that's what I'll do. I can definitely understand writing when you've got the time. Um, I mm -hmm. think that's, you know, that's great. Um, are there any questions for anybody in the chat that they, that you may have for Courtney or for JCP or, or about anything upcoming or about pinky swear, anything you want to learn more about, um, by all means, drop that in the chat and we will be happy to, to answer that question. Um, Courtney, when it comes to, to you, what is the most exciting thing about working on a series? Not just one novel, but a length of, you know, multiple books. What, what excites you most about that? I love being able to develop my characters. It gives them so much depth because going into the third, because I've written almost four full uh, novels of uh, the series with Pale Woods. And going into the third, there were a lot of times that I had easy access to to sarcastic quips and it just it would it worked so well. So once you know a character and when things happen, it's kind of one of those moments where it it sparks a little bit of laughter. So even if it's serious, you know, because it's a paranormal mystery, even though there are some very serious elements to it, you know, the characters well enough that you can you can laugh with them or even at them whenever something happens to them that that comes along just seamlessly in the dialogue that is certainly very exciting um and you know you've touched a lot on on your work and um each one of them being in kind of that sci-fi and fantasy realm what draws you to that genre well, I always loved mysteries is, is really what I, I grew up. My mother handed off some of her Nancy Drew uh, novels and and I got involved in mysteries. But I guess 
Harry Potter and um, and Lord of the Rings came in right as my my mind was developing. <laughs> so I, I've always had that fantasy element. I, I love I love being able to create a world, even if it's a realistic world that we live in. I love being able to create my own world with my own characters, and and so. I guess that's that's what draws me to it is because it's something familiar. It's kind of like a, whenever I'm sad, I, I go and eat some mashed potatoes or some uh, some macaroni and cheese. But so whenever I'm developing a story and I want to be familiar with it, then those are kind of the genres that I go to. I agree with that completely. I definitely um, am a huge fan of of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings myself. So um, I, I love being in that genre as well. And it's always exciting to read. Like I said, I love uh, reading the stories that you submit to our, our short stories and everything. Um, and so we've got Sabrina in the chat and she wants to know how quickly um, she can get a copy of Pinky Swear. And um, I know we are all in a huge hurry for that one. Um, we are hoping that it will be out at the very latest um, in in mid-September. No, don't apologize. I am just as rushed to get my hands on a copy as any of us. So um, by all means, we are hoping at the latest, it will be late September, but we're hoping, um, you know, earlier than that, somewhere mid-September. So um, we will let you know as soon as possible. And um, like I said, follow, you know, follow Courtney's social media, follow our social media, and we'll be announcing that pronto the day that it comes out. So everybody can get their hands on a copy. Um, so we're, we're excited to to have that one out very, very soon. Um, if we have any other questions from anybody else, by all means, drop them in the chat. Um, Courtney, is there anything that, that you wanna add or that you wanna discuss further with Pinky Swear or with any of your work? Um, you know, we're, we're so happy to, to have you spend some time with us tonight and, and talk about, you know, what's upcoming. Um, so, share with us, you know, some tips that you have or something exciting that you haven't touched on yet with, with Pinky Swear. Oh, let's see. Well, with Pinky Swear, um, there, there will be a death and it's going to be, it, there's, it's going to be a hard one. Um, so I'm not going to tell who I'm, I'm not going to, can you get into that? But it was even hard for me. Um, I I get very attached to my characters. So but there there will be there will be a death. And it's and it was it was very hard. It was hard to write and it was hard to go on with the series without that particular character as well. But it when you read it, you'll understand that that's the way the series had to play out. That's, I didn't know I was going to write it until I wrote it. And oh, that's, that's one of, that's one of the things I, I don't, I don't know. I'll start out with an idea and things come to me. I might even start with the day you ask me how many words I write in a day. Sometimes I might even write 5,000 words a day. And when I do, I'll, I'll start out with one idea. And by the time I get to 5,000, I've had 10 or 12 more ideas that that I want to do. And then I've had to go down and make little little notes as to, OK, well, we're going to go with this idea, this idea, this idea. But then I have to put them so that everything is nice and streamlined. And so. I I don't have an outline, but sometimes I get little ideas that that help me along the way. And, and I did that. Um, I did that with Pinky Swear in one part uh, because Sydney goes in and visits a visits a prison. Uh, that I'll I'll let you find out why. So everyone prepare for the waterworks, right? We're we're ready to cry. Grab your tissues with this one. Um, Sabrina wants to know how many books you think are going to be in the Palewood series. I know you said you already started on the next one. So so how many do you think you're, I know you don't plan, but if you had to guess, how many do you think you're going to um, feel like telling this story for? I don't know how long the Millers will want to will want to tell their story. Uh, I do see in the future maybe writing a book from Ella's perspective, but so far the third and fourth book is written from a nut from, you know, not Ella's perspective. So I am in, I'm about 
a quarter of the way through the fourth uh, Pale Woods Mystery. I do have a completed third. Um, the fourth Pale Woods Mystery, um, I stopped it so that I could write Rasputin's Dynasty because my brain was itching. <laughs> I had to I had to get that idea out. So once I got it out, then I I was out walking with my children and the paranormal suspense idea came to me. So I have to get it out and and that I should be returning to the fourth book of Pale Woods afterward. Uh, but I do have the completed third and I do have a fourth of the fourth book. So that is very exciting. And I can completely um, understand having to having to pause to, to work on different storylines. Once you've got so many in your head, you got to sort them out a little. Um, but thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, so I do want to let everyone know that we are going to do a quick giveaway just with our participants. I've assigned a random number to everybody here. Um, and with just a random number generator. So this is completely, um, completely out of the blue, but we're going to go ahead and um, choose a, a winner this evening and the winner will receive a copy of My Brother's Keeper and a copy of Pinky Swear, but obviously you will not receive your reward until the middle or end of September when the book is released. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my email in the chat and if you are the winner tonight, please um, email me your um, name and address and we will I will let you know as soon as we're able to ship that out again it'll be you know less than a month but sometime in the coming months so um, give me just one second here and let's see our winner is gonna be Ralphine Major you are our winner this evening and you are going to receive um, a copy of my Brother's Keeper and a copy of Pinky Swear um, from, from JCP. So please email me. I put my email in the chat. Please email me um, your address and we will get that sent out to you. Like I said, as soon as Pinky Swear is released. Um, for everyone else, don't despair. There will be other giveaways. I know Courtney is planning several and JCP sometimes does giveaways on our um, social media as well. So there will be upcoming giveaways for everyone to enter and um, everyone will be able to, to get their hands on Pinky Swear as soon as possible. Um, but, you know, we are, we are as excited as we could be for, for the next installment in Courtney's series. Um, so are there any last questions or Courtney, any closing remarks that you wanna make this evening? Um, thank everyone for coming and, you know, thank you, Courtney, for sharing with us. What else do you have for us? I wanted to congratulate Miss Ralphine on winning the first and second book in the Pale Woods Mystery Series. Please let me know what you think. Reach out. Let me know. Feedback is always welcome, uh, especially from a fellow creative. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending and for staying and listening to me. Um, I, I don't usually think that I have a lot of, of things to say, but I guess I do. <laughs> thank you for for coming yes. out. Yes, thank you so much for sharing with us, Courtney. And like I said, this will be available um, soon within, you know, the next week will be available to, to share through social media and on our website. So um, we hope everyone will come back and share it with your friends and, and get everyone excited. Um, Sabrina, thank you. We are glad we are thrilled to have you from from your college. I hope everything is going well with your education and for everybody else. I hope your days are wonderful and I hope you're all excited um, about Pinky Swear and I hope you all can get your hands on um, My Brother's Keeper and, and get a head start on the series if you haven't already. So um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to say goodbye. So goodbye to everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight and we hope to see you in the next one. Courtney. Thank you very much. Thank you Bye, for attending. Everyone. Bye.